Well, what have we here? This is a little video about what I consider to be the absolute stupidest decision in the history of horology, of watchmaking, clockmaking. It is just something that uh, gets talked about here and there, but very few people actually understand what they're talking about. And <laughs> it's a tough subject to understand, uh, frankly, because there's so many variables involved, as we will demonstrate here. Um, it seems to me that people universally either overestimate or underestimate the risks associated with radium dials. And so for your viewing pleasure, um, we're going to take a look at some different watches and clocks and uh, see how they compare with a handy dandy little Geiger counter here that I've got. And I'm using a manual focus lens, so I'm just gonna have to hold it down here. And as you can see, it uh, <laughs> starts to read as soon as I hold it near those pieces. Um, each one of these is a radium piece. And I'm gonna start by kind of moving all of them but one out of the immediate area so that we can do some testing. All right, first here is your standard little folding travel alarm clock. This one is, uh, I believe, German made. Yep, German made. It just says Germany on it, so that probably means it's pre-war. Anyway, so let's take, let's check out the uh, radiation level on that. As you can see, it's slightly elevated above background. But in reality, not granted, this is not a very sensitive detector. It's got a very small tube in it, and I have to hold it nearest to where the hands are or wherever I think the most radium is on the piece to kind of get a good reading. But, you know, we're getting a mild reading here of about, what, 50, 60 counts a minute. Now it's climbing slightly. And we're getting 70 counts a minute. But, you know, listen to the audio and that'll give you a better idea. So, you know, this has a moderate amount of radium in it. Now let's take a look at another travel alarm clock. This one's Swiss made. As you can hear, this one's a little hotter. Let's push in the count up past 120, 140. So definitely some radium there. It's definitely producing radon gas. And it's definitely producing some gamma rays and some x-rays even though most of the emission is gonna be alphas that are stopped by the crystal, it still does release some penetrating ionizing radiation as this detector is showing us. So, you know, we're getting up to where about 230 counts or so. Definitely some radium there. Here's a little West Clox. This is a German made one, kind of a, kind of a cute little, and again, this one here, I can just tell by the rate of the clicking that it's above background, but not much. So there's, there's very little radium in this one, but there is some. And here's another Seth Thomas travel alarm clock. This one's German made. And this one definitely has a little more activity than the last one. Not super high though, by any means, but you know, a little higher. All right, so let's take a look at some watches um, before we get into the really interesting stuff. And this is a Hilton. It is a Swiss-made watch from the 50s. It's an automatic, kind of your standard Swiss auto from that era, 50s or 60s. And what's interesting is that this little tiny watch so far is significantly hotter than any of those clocks that we just looked at, which have much larger dials and much larger hands. And one would think, just from looking at it, that of course the clocks have more radium than the watch. But as you can hear, 
This watch definitely has some radium in it, and it's so far the hottest thing we've tested. Getting up around 290, climbing 300. I can tell you where it ends up. I've tested this watch before. It gets up to around 400 counts a minute from this detector, which again is limited by the size of the tube. If it was using a, you know, as you can see this watch here, what is this? This is a Crosby automatic. It's like a diver, it's like a skin diver type of watch. It claims to be French, which is interesting. And definitely a little something there, but pretty low compared to everything we've tested. Now, getting into some more interesting pieces. This is a Hamilton, a Swiss made Hamilton from the 50s. And uh, let's, let's give that one a check. So right away, that's the hottest piece we tested. Because this meter averages, it takes a little while for the count, the count per minute reading to stabilize. Um, I believe this one stabilizes out around 2200 counts a minute on this meter. So just to give you some, some context, your normal background radiation where I'm at in the Pacific Northwest, you know, somewhere around, somewhere between 12 and 20 counts per minute is normal background radiation. So this is, you know, 2000 counts a minute that's a hundred times elevated from background radiation on this watch. Now of course that's coming from a single source and it's not a whole body dose but you know this is where I start wondering there are many issues with radium. Um, watchmakers need to be aware when they open these things that the tiny dust particles um, are very dangerous. You do not want to breathe in or swallow or otherwise ingest the tiny little flakes of radioactive particles that come off of radium paint. And it will be throwing particles whether or not the paint's disintegrating or not. Even if the paint looks perfectly intact, it's still throwing particles off just by the nature of its radioactivity. Um, it's just how it works. Um, so, yeah, it's topping up around 1800, 1900 counts per minute there. I've gotten it about as high as 2000. Now here is another Swiss made Hamilton. This one has tiny little specks of radium in those little indices in the dial. It's really a beautiful watch. But I have never opened this watch and here's why I've never opened this watch. So this watch, it's already, it's already up to 1,600, but this watch tops out at around 4,000 counts per minute or so. Um, you know, 200 times that of background radiation. And of course, every time you hear one of those clicks, it's putting off a little bit of radon gas, pretty much. So, um, not the healthiest things to have around. Um, yep. So where am I going with this presentation? Well, the first thing I want to demonstrate is that the radium level in different pieces, pieces varies wildly um, by orders of magnitude. I mean, already this watch is, you know, 10 times hotter than this one, which was coming in at 400 counts a minute. So this, this watch here is an order of magnitude more radioactive than this one. And that's the first thing to, to kind of take away, that all radium dials are not created equal. So yeah, it topped out at around 3,300 counts. I know it goes up to around 4,000 if I leave the meter there long enough. Anyway, I'm going to put those away. So getting back to the amount of radium things. What I have here 
are two boxes of spare bull of a hands. These are all radium hands. They're for very small 50s watches, so they're not very big hands. And the amount of paint on these is actually quite tiny. But we have, you know, here we've got what, like 50, 60 pairs of hands here. So let's let's measure the radiation coming off of 50 or 60 pairs of these bull of a hands. And we can hear that it's really not that much. In fact, it, it almost appears that like all of these hands together, if I kind of gang them up on the sensor here, all these hands together really aren't as hot as one of these hotter Hamilton watches. Still not something I want around my shop. And then go in a special box that lives out in the garage and when that garage, when that box gets full enough, these things are going away. Um, so, to you fellow watchmakers out there, this this was gonna this is gonna you know hit home a little bit here. I'm sure you've got dozens of little tins like this sitting around your workshop with old 50s movements in them, little spare parts waiting for something to complete the journey. Uh, this is where things get dangerous right here because. This is an exposed movement, not in a case. Um, I'm, I'm likely slightly contaminating my workspace just by opening this. Um, I've certainly released a little bit of radon gas into the room by opening this. Um, let's measure this watch. This is an Elgin from the 50s. I believe it's an automatic. Okay. Again, not too terribly bad. Nowhere near as hot as those Hamilton. Some little tiny Elgin dial, like off a lady's watch, it's a really tiny dial. Again, not a whole lot, but definitely radioactive. And th again, this is this is where things get dangerous when you start handling these things outside of their cases. Um, it's not good. Uh, I hope that any of you who work on radium watches on your bench take extreme precautions. Um, about this one right here. This one's insanely hot. Sounds like a waterfall. And this is getting back to my talking point here, which is you know, everybody's like, oh, it's just a little bit of radium on one watch. It, you know, it can't possibly give you that much exposure. Well, how many people who have said that have actually held up a Geiger counter to their watch and found out just how hot it is? By the way, we're at 20,000 counts and climbing right now. 22,000. 23,000. 24. 25. 26. 27. 28. Um... And again, an order of magnitude hotter. So far we're at 35,000 counts. So this watch, which is putting out 3,500, an order of magnitude less radiation than the one we're testing. And that one, and, and this one here is an order of magnitude less. So we got 400 counts, 4,000 counts, 40,000 counts and climbing on this one piece right here. Absolutely an insane amount of radium to have put in this thing. Um, and yeah, this is this is the biggest mistake in horological history, in my opinion, because this mistake has the ability to af affect people's lives. And it did. Lots of people died because of radium dials in the factories that made these. And because this stuff causes cancer... You'll never really know if a radium dial is what gave you cancer if you work on radium dials all the time. You know, unless it's a specific type of cancer that shows up in your bones that's linked to radium. How will you know if, if this is ultimately what did you in or not? And unless you have a Geiger counter, how do you know whether you're working on something that has, you know, 50 counts a minute versus something that has 50,000 counts a minute? Um, what is this watch? It is a Westfield, some little Swiss-made something 
from the 50s, presumably, or earlier, maybe the 30s, actually, looking at the style of the thing. Yeah, so I hope that's kind of showing a, uh, yeah, here's an Elgin, here's an Elgin 711 movement that is still giving me a strong reading right through a steel tin. Not through that end so much as that end. So, huh, how much radiation is too much? What is dangerous? What isn't dangerous? Well, I guess that's up to each person. But before you can make a qualified judgment on what is dangerous, what isn't dangerous, etc., you have to kind of have some idea of what you're talking about. And as we've seen from looking at all of these various radium pieces here, is that it varies wildly by orders of magnitude. And so any rough guess about how much you're being exposed to is just that, a rough guess. A lot of the ep epidemiological studies done by Oak Ridge uh, National Laboratories on the topic of how much exposure you receive from wearing a radium watch, having a radium watch in your house, et cetera, et cetera, a lot of that is done based on what they believe the average amount of radium to be in every piece. And as I've just shown you, the amount of radium in a piece can vary tenfold, a hundredfold, probably even a thousandfold um, if, if you get the right piece. Um, I believe I have shown you my hottest piece. Um, let's see if I have anything else in here that's got a nasty surprise to it. Um, I've got lots and lots of these junk old 50s movements that I've, you know, you come and you buy bulk lots of watches and they and they come you know i'm sure every old watch every old school watchmaker has got dr dusty drawers full of these old dials kicking around well some of these dials could be putting out enough stuff to really be concerned about not just direct radiation exposure but again the principal hazard here is ingestion of particles and the hotter a source is the more likely that a particle that comes off of it uh, will be more active so um, just a random jar full of various radium pieces here. Yeah. Again, I don't think uh, anything in, anything that I still have around is as hot as that one that was putting out 40, 50,000 counts. Yeah, this one here, this Bulova. Uh, no, it's, well, that's what it claims to be, but it's not. It's that, whatever that said it was. And, you know, that's not beta particles coming out, too. That's, that's gammas and x-rays. This thing's in a steel tin. So, anyway. I regard this to be the biggest mistake in horological history, and I regard people being cavalier about the hazards of radiation in their pieces as a continuance of that mistake. People should absolutely not assume that these pieces are safe. Oh, my grandfather wore it for 50 years. It's fine. And people should really, really be careful before opening a watch that's suspected of having radium. And if you uh, work with a lot of movements, you, you need a Geiger counter. The, this little cheap one here works well enough. It was a hundred bucks. Um, if you're a watchmaker and you get vintage pieces on your bench, I highly advise you to test and evaluate each piece before you open it up, before you expose yourself to the dust that will have accumulated. Even if the paint is completely intact, the radioactive decay process throws particles off violently from the painted surfaces and those little minute you know atom or molecule sized particles are inside the case and you know these cases here frankly aren't sealed so they're kind of very slowly leaking radioactive dust they all put out radon uh, radon is a radioactive gas that you really don't want to be breathing and so if you have a lot of radium pieces in your home you might want to think about that as well. Uh, that is why this box that I just showed you is going right back out to the garage and this whole counter is getting wiped down um, and I'm going to wash my hands very carefully right now. So anyway, that's it for the video. I hope you found it interesting.